Hello, I'm Richard Norman, the Field Services Training Leader for Monitoring and Diagnostics with GE Grid Solutions UK Limited. This how-to video, we will show you how to install and commission the hardware for Hydran 201 Ti single gas monitors. When you receive your Hydran 201 Ti from GE, it is recommended that you remove the contents to ensure it has arrived in a complete and undamaged state. After opening the box, at the top you should find the installation kit. Keep this together as the contents will assist your installation. Now we will take a look at the installation kit contents and identify the tools and their usage. Inside the box you should find one soft copy of perception software including equipment manuals, one ingress protective cap for the gas sensor, one roll of PTFE or Teflon tape, to wrap the sensor and brass adapter threads to prevent leaks. One 3 16 of an inch time 9 inch long cushion grip hex tool to remove and replace the screws between the brass adapter and the base plate. One 7 64 of an inch hex key to remove the conduit connector box lid. One 5 30 seconds of an inch hex key for tightening and loosening the sensor bleed screw. One USB cable a local connection to set up and configure the unit. Inside you will find the parameter sheet supplied by GE. Retain this sheet for future reference. Now remove the hydran from the transportation box. Be aware the 201 Ti weighs approximately 6 kilograms or 12 pounds. Let's take a look at the features and significant parts of the hydran 201 Ti. This is a brass adapter with protective cover. This adapter screws into the transformer supply flange. Here are two conduit ports for installation of any wiring, communications and system relays. On the base plate you will find the system configuration label and the unit serial number. The brass adapter can be ordered with a 1 inch, 1.5 inch or 2 inch MPT thread connection. At the front of the unit we have the air breathing vent. This must be kept clear for correct system operation. This securing nut retains the cover in place to maintain the IP66 rating. The cover has a display window to view real-time gas levels, trending information and system data. Now let's remove the cover and look at the internal features and parts. First we have the central processing unit, CPU. It has an internal battery to maintain the system clock. There is a press button HMI to change settings system configuration and view trending data. An LCD screen to display gas levels, trending and system information. On the left hand side we have the local USB port to connect with either the operating software Hygen host or GE's perception diagnostic software. The mains wiring connections are behind the CPU with a cover to protect and limit inadvertent contact. Here is the supervisory link terminations for connection to optional controllers or daisy chain up to a maximum of 32 units together. This is the hydrogen gas sensor. We'll look at this in more detail shortly. On the circumference there is a bleed screw and bleed port. On the right hand side there are three dry contact alarm relays, one for system alarm and two gas level alarms. These are LED diagnostic indicators they inform the operator the state of the system and power supply. This is a unit base plate with resistors that heat and cool to modulate sensor temperature to assist with thermal dynamic oil flow. To remove the sensor, first remove the CPU. Remove the two screws as indicated by the arrows. Now with a little effort, Ease the CPU off the two extended posts and central locating pin. If the CPU loosens at an angle, return it to its fitted location and retry, maintaining a level position to achieve removal. After removing the CPU, now unscrew the electrical connection. From the sensor, twist anti-clockwise to remove. Now it should be possible to remove the sensor by hand as shown. Next, a closer look at the sensor. Here are the 1 inch MPT thread. Check there is no damage prior to installation. 
These are the bleed port and bleed screw to oil bleed the sensor during the machining process. This is the sensor electrical connection. It has a keyway to align the pins correctly. This is the sensor air vent. It must be kept clear to ensure correct sensor operation. And here is the sensor serial number. This must match the sensor parameter sheet supplied by GE. To install the hydran, the brass adapter must also be removed. Use the supplied tool to remove the ring of six screws from the base plate. To install wiring and conduit to the base plate, remove the box lid. Retain the screws and internal rubber seal to maintain the system IP rating. Remove the necessary number of conduit blanking plugs. With the correct diameter conduit connector, fit it into the available port and tighten correctly. Ensure the seal is present and correctly compressed. With the correct diameter brass connector, apply tape to the connector, sensor, and on this example, the heat fin adapter. To prepare the brass adapter, wrap tape clockwise, ensuring tape doesn't cover the first thread, therefore reducing the chance of tape getting inside the sensor. Heat fin adapters are recommended for installs when the environment consistently exceeds 40 degrees Celsius or the oil temperature above 90 degrees Celsius. Next wrap the heat fin adapter, again ensuring no tape covers the first thread. <music> Lastly, prepare the sensor. Always ensure the tape is sufficiently tight to clearly identify the thread profile and not over the first thread. Wrap three to five turns across the whole thread length in the direction of thread. This is clockwise as shown. Pull to break the tape and smooth down any loose ends. Ensure that no tape is overlapping the first thread, therefore reducing the opportunity of tape to go inside the transformer. If the sensor is removed from the unit for a prolonged length of time, use the protective cap supplied in the install kit to maintain good equipment hygiene. Next install the parts onto the identified transformer valve. Confirm the thread is clean and undamaged. So on this installation, first install the heat fin adapter, initially by hand to prevent cross threading, then tighten with a suitable smooth jawed adjustable tool to a good engineering tightness. Next install the brass adapter by hand, then tighten with a two inch across flat wrench or suitable smooth-jawed smooth adjustable tool. When the adapter is fully tight, two screw holes must be on a horizontal plane to align the hydran unit display screen. Next to install the sensor, confirm sufficient tape across the threads, start by hand, then use the correct sensor tool as shown. To correctly use the tool, completely remove the bleed screw. Insert by hand the dummy screw, finger tight only. Slide over the tube wrench and tighten. When fully tightened, the bleed hole must be at the 12 o'clock position to allow for effective oil bleeding. When completed, remove the dummy screw and reinsert the bleed screw. Next to bleed the sensor. Whether installing with a heat fin adapter or not, the procedure is the same. During bleeding, ensure you fully open the supply flange to allow unimpeded thermal oil flow.
When this is complete and air free, close the bleed screw and clean down the sensor and electrical connections. Next to install the hydride main body, with the conduit plate removed to allow cables and conduit to be fastened. Follow this method to reinsert and secure the six adapter screws. Ensure the spring washers are present before tightening. A useful tip to reduce the chance of screws from falling off. Cover the end of the tool with a small piece of electrical tape. This will keep the screws in place during retightening. It is recommended that you allow the unit to hang under control and then insert the bottom left screw first as shown. Then insert the remainder. Only fully tighten when all screws are relocated. Tighten evenly using the cross wagon wheel method. After all screws are retightened, now reconnect the sensor cable. Align the master keyway to prevent cable pin damage. Now continue to connect all wiring, power, relays and communications. Remember to refit the conduit box cover and rubber gasket. After all cables are attached, to replace the CPU, align the centre pin and two outer pin towers. Guide the CPU into location. Refit the CPU securing screws. You can now power on the unit and if required, set the date and time using a local HMI. Confirm the local area network connections and then either configure the system locally with the HMI, the CPU USB connection or via the local server with the operating software Hydrogen Host. After all local activity is completed, securely refit the outer cover. Ensure the sealing ring is in place and in a good condition. Slide the cover over the central securing pin and refit the cover securing nut. Hand tighten to maintain the IP66 rating. Thank you for watching this how to video. Look forward to more MD content.